All right, let's do the generalization assignment for multiple or orthogonal linear regression. Um, don't worry, it's mostly about making graphs. So the first problem is what we want to do is take this code that is from the lab, and it produces this graph right here. And, and we want to produce the graph from the textbook instead. So make it prettier, make the x and y axis look better, make the lines um, represent the different levels of that factor more easily. This one has circles and we want different shapes. So let's do that. First thing I've done, head over to R. I've got my lab two set up already. And here's what currently happens. Oh, I need to add this, I guess. I just copied that code. Oh, I need to add a few more things. Let's keep making this work. There we go. I think that's all I need. So there we go. That's the graph that's currently being made. And I want to make this other graph. This one right here is much prettier. So I'm going to work towards that. This is really just a, a problem to get you to think about some of the little details about ggplot2. So I'm going to try to do this. I'm, I'm going to do this online. You'll see how I do it. Um, really, <laughs> I forget how to use ggplot all the time. So I'm just basically going to go off memory for some things if I can remember it. And otherwise, I'm going to Google it because that's probably what everyone does who can't remember how to use ggplot. So the first thing I want to do is change the X axis title. I, I remember that that one is X lab. And I added a plus here. We're just going to keep on adding new things. So let, let's add the title. And what was that called? Number of interpolated lists. I'm just going to copy that. Boom. Number of interpolated lists. Let's just see if that works. Right on. That's what I wanted to do. And what was the other one? Number of words correct. So that's going to be Y lab. Number of words correct. Okay, so we added those things. Let's do another comparison. All right, so the, the Y axis has 0, 20, 40, 60, 80, but this one only has 20, 40, 60. So what could we do? Well, we can control these breaks on the Y axis, and let's figure out how to do that. Whoops, minus, I wanna add a plus here. And hmm, I'm, I'm brainstorming. I just did a bunch of brainstorming and I think, I think I remember this one. Scale underscore continuous scale. Oh, there it is. Scale Y continuous. This is a continuous variable number of words, correct? And I think we can go in here and say breaks equal and then give it the ones we want. So 20, 40, 60, 80. Let's see if that does it. Nope. Okay, so that's not how you do it. <laughs> oh, too bad. Well, it turns out I wasn't so far off. It was scale Y continuous, um, but I needed to set the limits from zero to 80 so that it would actually show 80. So I, I so I added limits equals zero to 80. Now I, I think, let's just see what happens if we add a 50 in there. Yeah, yeah. So using this scale Y continuous, you can add different ticks and by setting the breaks and you just put a vector of numbers in there and it will add the ones you, you want. And then you can set the limits here. And those two things need to be all in the same range. Otherwise you'll cut off your breaks. So I'm gonna go back to 20, 40, 60, 80. And let's do another comparison here. Notice that this number of interpolated lists is also a continuous variable and it's being plotted here 
in this way that respects that continuous aspect of the variable. So the eight is not right beside the four, it's four away from the four. So there's a bigger gap here. Now we have that basically set up here, but we have a six showing up. ggplot2 is automatically going up by two on, in terms of the breaks on the x-axis. And let's get rid of that six. How about that? So let's copy this, do scale x continuous, and we'll just put in two, four, and eight. We don't need these limits, I don't think. Let's do two, four, and eight. And there we got rid of that six. Great, let's do another comparison. So there's some printing of the names of each of these lines. So this is how many learning trials there are. That's really useful. I find that super useful on this graph. It's like, what does this circle mean? Oh, it means two learning trials. What does this star mean? It means four learning trials. I like this strategy. Um, so what we wanna do is change this graph over here so that it has some of this um, additional information about what the lines mean. Right now, we can't, we don't know what which line this is for, which line is this for, which line is that for. Here's where we're gonna run into some minor issues though uh, with ggplot2. Here's, here's one thing we can do right away, I'll show you. So we could say, um, color equals number of learning trials. All right, so this works. You can see sort of that the darker color is a two, the middle blue color is a a four and this lightest color is an eight. And so in some ways, this is how this is how ggplot2 will do this. This is how the grammar of graphics suggests you do this. Um, let's look at the geom point function. Because what I might want to do is change the circles to different um, symbols, all right? Now there is a feature called shape. And we can change, we can set the shape here, just like this. But watch what happens when we do that. It says a continuous variable cannot be mapped to shape. So you're out of luck. And you know, that makes sense. If you, if you think about the reality of this, like we're going from two to four to eight, that is a continuous variable. This shape here, you know, this these are just like three different shapes. These are continuous, or these are kind of like a categorical thing laid on top of a continuous thing we can zoom in and see that. Uh, it's there, It's not that s open circles turn into stars when you go up two, right? The, um, so ggplot doesn't want to let you do this kind of thing because in some sense it, it really doesn't make sense. But we could we could mess with the factor structure a little bit. In order for number of learning trials to not be a continuous variable, we need to turn it into a factor. And in order to do that, we could do that. I mean, here's a simple way to do it. Dollar sign number of learning trials as dot factor. I'm just going to assign this thing it's kind of a long, ugly statement. Look at that. Assign this thing back into itself, turn it into a factor. Now, when you look at it over here, 
you will see that it is a factor with three levels. Previously, it would have looked like this one here, a number. But now it's a factor with three levels, so it has lost its continuous structure in R. It's a factor now. And now that it's a factor, when we do this graph, it does change the shape for us. And it produces a legend that we can look up. So we can see that the circle goes for two, the triangle goes for four, and the square goes for eight. And I'm gonna stop here now because that more or less gets us to this graph. I encourage you to try to figure out how you could do this part and add these labels on because that's pretty helpful too. But I'll, I won't do that in this example. All right, let's move on to the second question. It's worth three points. And just to make this real quick, you could read that, but if we look at the question here on the website, uh, it's really just asking you to make this graph with ggplot2. So we've imagining extending the Slimeca design from a three by three, which is represented in one of these facets, with amount of practice and amount of distraction in three levels, and extend it to a three by three by three design and I, I think in the example, I imagined having a manipulation where you reward people different amounts of money and see if that in, improves their memory because they'd be more motivated. So you'd have people with giving zero dollars to do the experiment, $50 or a million dollars. And if, uh, you know, if giving people more money motivates them and they try harder and they remember more, the idea that I've represented in this graph is that... Um, more money means more recall. More practice means more recall. And more distraction means less recall. So we've got these three different influences on our recall variable. And the task for question number two is, can you make a data frame representing this graph? And can you make this graph using ggplot2, using facet wrapping? So I'm going to move this over here so I can come back and look at it sometimes. Let's get into it. So let's see. Uh, I want to make a, some kind of tibble. And I'm just going to start at the top. We have a reward variable. And this one it has the levels 0, 50, and um, 1 million, I think is what it was. Let's just use those as uh, characters. Now, if I, if I look at this uh, picture, I can see that in, in the $0, there's nine things in there. And there's nine things for 50, and there's nine things for that. So, you know, I definitely need to have nine of these in my tibble. So let's check this out. So we've got nine for zero, nine for 50, and nine for a million. Great. Uh, wow, I can't remember anything. So amount of practice, that's, that's another one. So let's just call that practice. And... You know, we have the levels 2, 4, and 8 there. And for each of those levels, they happen um, let's see, let's do each equals 3. I'm not doing a good job of talking out loud here while I do this. Um, let's see if I can improve my double timing here. So this isn't going to work. Watch what happens when I do this. Well, yeah, we'll get these things aren't the right. They're not the same size. Um, each level of practice has to happen three times because, uh, for example, when you're having two practice trials, you also have three interpolated learning trials. So each of these numbers has to happen three times. And then this whole thing 
has to happen three times in order uh, to get all of the different reward conditions. So it goes like this. Within the zero reward condition, there are three times where practice has two trials. There's three times where practice has four trials and three times where practice has eight trials. It's right here. These three times in zero for two, these three times for four, these three times for eight. Okay, so we've got practice going on. Let's do this distraction thing, zero, four, and eight. So we'll add one more, distraction. And we have zero, four, and eight. And um, the way this one goes, we don't need to use the each. We can just repeat this one uh, let's think about how many times we need to do it. It goes 0, 4, 8, 0, 4, 8, 0, 4, 8. So that's three times. And then 0, 4, 8, 0, 4, 8, 0, 4, 8. Or sorry, it's 0, 4, 8, 0, 4, 8, 0, 4, 8. 3, 3, 3. Um, or, oh, man. This stuff gets complicated. It's more like this. Uh, 0, 4, 8 for 2. 0, 4, 8 for 4, 0, 4, 8 for 8, and then another 0, 4, 8, and another 0, 4, 8, and another 0, 4, 8. So we want to do this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 times. There we go. So it's 0, 4, 8, 0, 4, 8, 0, 4, 8. That covers our bases. Now all we need to do is put in recall. Now, what should these values be? I'm going to move this over a bit. And let's see if we can just think about how to put in numbers so that it will result in this graph. Now, we are starting out in the $0 facet. We're talking about practice level 2. And we're talking about 0, 4, 8. So we have got to enter numbers that go like this. 0. Oh, sorry. Oh. <laughs> this one is 0. This one is 4. And this one is 8. So what do those numbers look like to you? I'm thinking um, that's a 5. That's less than 5, and that's less than that. I mean, that looks like a 1. That looks like a 3. Let's go 5, 3, 1. How about that? Five, three, one. All right. Let's increase these all by one as we go up the amounts of practice. So this would be six, four, two, and this will be seven, five, three. Seven, five, three. I don't think this will work. We haven't done all these other numbers here. Let's try it out. Yep, it doesn't want to, doesn't like that. I just want to do something really fast though. I'm going to shoot forward a bit and we'll come back and change these numbers. You can, when you're making these, um, if you're not sure what's going on, you can jump ahead to see what your numbers turn out like. If you like, if you're not sure that you're adding in these numbers and you're not sure it's going to make the graph the way you want it to be made, you can always fill out these test numbers and then go and make the graph and see what it looks like. So let's just jump to that part, see if we're on the right track. What we should be able to do is I've, re I've repeated the values for $0 into the 50 and the 1 million sections. So we shouldn't see this graph. We should see a repetition of these data in these other facets. So let's just quickly make that graph. Uh, what do I want to do, actually? Let's borrow from the code that we already made. This is the nice thing about ggplot. Once you have some working code, you can just use it for other things. Okay, so this one is called new data. Let's put that here, new data. And the x 
is practice. So let's call this practice. And the grouping variable here is distraction. And the y variable is recall. And again, oops, the, the shape variable, yeah, we could have shape variable. That's going to be the different circles. I'm going to make that distraction. And I'm going to change distract and distraction to a factor. I'm going to do that right here. So that, remember, we had to do that before. Um, one thing that's different about this data frame is that these are these values would represent means across subjects, not individual subject data. So we no longer need the stuff in here that's computing summary values. Let's check out, oh, and the, we're probably gonna have to change these to zero, let's do five, 10, 20. Let's add a 15 in there too. That goes up by five. Go all the way up to 20. Okay, I think that will do it. Um, that's not exactly like this. We need to add a facet wrap and we need to do by reward. So let's check that out. There we go. So we're getting pretty close to this graph um, and it does seem like the way I was entering those numbers was was making sense. So the next thing, oh, we've got a zero. Our million is uh, in the middle now. So for some reason, um, the way the ordering works, it goes like this. I'm just gonna, we can change that later, but I'm gonna do something really fast because this is gonna bug me. So I'm, I'm using the alphabet ABC to um, guide the ordering that happens by default in ggplot. So we've got A, B, C. All right, so for the $50 condition, um, we have to got to make a decision. I mean, basically what I'm seeing in this example graph that I made is that all of these things are increased by some amount in the $50 condition. So what what is that amount? I don't know. Um, this one kind of goes here and then goes up to a 10. So I'm just ballparking that. That Let's just add five to all of these numbers to get these ones. Okay, so we're talking about these numbers here. And I could go in and add five by hand. Let's just quickly do that. So 10, eight, six, 11, nine, seven, 12, 10, eight. So put new numbers in there and let's look at that graph now. All right, we raised all of these data points by five, which is what we wanted to do. Now, uh, these ones here, they're even higher. Looks like, again, these 10 has gone to a 15. So let's raise these ones by 10 from the starting point. So we'll go 15, 13, 11, 16, 14, 12, 17, 15, 13. All right, so there we have it. We've pretty much made a graph like this using ggplot2, we've used facet wraps, we've got a three by three, des a three by three by three design here. And something like this would certainly get you the full three points for this question. All right, that's all. See you next week.